what is up with TypeScript enums? They're a little bit different than a lot of other TypeScript features. And so in this video, we're gonna take a look at how they work and why maybe you don't wanna use them. So let's start with the basics. An enum is a type that has a defined set of values that you can think of like tokens or symbols. So I'm gonna paste in here in our playground an example enum, and this perhaps represents the state of a blog post or maybe a video in our content management system. And as you can see, we've got three states, draft, scheduled, and published. The actual values for these shouldn't really matter so much as long as they are unique. And so now that we have this enum, we can actually use it. So for example, I can create something here that is of type post state, and we can assign poststate.draft to that. So notice a couple of things. So first of all, x has a type of post state, and it has a value of poststate.draft. So we're using post state as both a type and as a value, or as a kind of holder for values. And if you look at the compiled JavaScript over here on the right, you can see that unlike a lot of types, enums actually do have representations in JavaScript. So you can see we're doing this kind of interesting function-based thing where we have this post state object that we're initializing. Inside these square brackets, we initialize post state dot draft to equal zero. And then of course, since that's an expression, it returns zero. So we have post state at zero equals draft. And so we're kind of mapping it both ways. And so what we're seeing is by default, when we have an enum like this, TypeScript will actually set the values for our members here to be some incrementing number. And we'll start at zero and we'll go up. And we can actually see this in the editor too. If I hover over them, we can see what the values are. If we hover over X here, we can see that it is of type post state. Now, if we remove this type, I think we'll probably get a more narrow type. We can see it's of type post state dot draft. Post state dot draft is both the type and the value for this particular variable, which is kind of different from a lot of what we see in other parts of TypeScript where types and values are very separate and can't really be interchanged. We can actually choose the values for these members if we want. As you can see, like I said, we started with 0, 1, and 2. But for example, if we change draft here to be equal to 10, then what we're seeing, and let me bump the font size up a bit for you, uh, what we're seeing here is that now we start at 10 and we still increment. So we have 11 and 12, which makes sense, right? We can just increment like that, or we could totally just choose values for all of these if we want. If we set scheduled to 20, we get 10 and 20, and then we start incrementing, or we could choose a value for all three of these, 10, 20, and 30. Now, what's interesting about an enum like this, and I'm gonna go back to the automatically filled in types here, so we have zero, one, and two again. What's interesting about this is that it's a great way to represent a type that increments or goes up in value, or even goes up in like scope. So let me show you another example here of something that I actually have used in the past, something pretty similar. What we have is an enum that represents file permissions. So we have none, read, write, and execute, right? And so these are the four types of permissions you can have. Now, let's say we're building a system where, where these are not individual permissions, but if you have write, say, then you must also have read. And if you have execute, you also have write and therefore read as well. And so these are kind of like growing in scope, not just in the actual value maybe that they represent. Setting this up in an enum makes it really easy to determine what someone can do with a file. So for example, we can have this can access file function where we can pass in the permission level that the user has for this file, and then maybe the required permission for whatever operation they want to perform. And we can return true if their permission is greater than or equal to the required permission, right? So we could see here that const t uh, we can do can access file and we can do file perm read and that's the permission of the user and then we can say file perm dot maybe uh, execute is what they need to be able to perform this operation and if we do console log for t and then I go over to the logs here and we actually run this you can see false because they need execute permission but if we change this to just read permission what we get is true because now this user can actually perform that operation on that file. And it's a really nice, easy way to handle those types of scope changes. However, this actually starts breaking down a little bit. So we can have a function here um, that we can call get file, and we're gonna take a file permission p here. Okay, so we have this function that takes a file permission. Now, if I call get file, I can pass it file permission.read. 
obviously, right? And that makes sense. What I can also do is pass it the number that is represented by one of these. So for example, let's say instead of file permission dot read, I wanted to pass it execute, which is three. Great. So now we can see that this passes just fine as well. Even though this takes a file permission, it will accept the number that represents it. However, this gets a little weird quickly. So for example, five, uh oh, five isn't actually a valid file permission. However, when an enum has numeric values like this, it doesn't prevent you from just passing any number in to represent that. Now, this is an intentional feature of TypeScript, and I have an article on my blog that goes into a little more details about why, so check that link out below the like button. Still, it feels like uh, something that's really easy to shoot yourself in the foot with, right? You can pass a value like this, and we don't have that rigorous typing that you expect from the rest of TypeScript. It feels like this is kind of varying from how most other pieces of TypeScript works. So how can we get around this type of thing? Well, there is something that we can do. And that is we can actually use string values in our enum instead of numeric values. So here's a new post state enum. We have a draft scheduled and published. And this time, instead of letting TypeScript determine the value or even assigning our own number values, we are assigning string values here. And when we assign these string values, you can see our actual value representation is a little bit different in JavaScript. Instead of having that two way mapping, we just have post state draft, post state scheduled and post state published and those equal the strings that we said they should equal. So this seems much nicer, right? There's no way that this could accept just random strings. And in fact, that's exactly true. So if I create a variable X here that should be of type post state, I can do post state dot draft and that's good. And if I create another variable post state that I think should equal something else, then what we can see is TypeScript complains that idea is not assignable to type post state. That's great. So it's keeping us within the scope of the values uh, that we have or the members that we have in this enum. However, this is actually, again, not quite the way you would expect this to operate in TypeScript. So let's create another variable here, Z. This should also be post state. And this time we will set it to the string draft. Again, this doesn't work. Draft is not assignable to type post state. This operates differently than the rest of TypeScript. So as you know, the rest of TypeScript operates with a kind of like shape or structure based typing where as long as the shape of your object matches the shape of the type that it needs to match, TypeScript will consider it valid. It doesn't actually have to be instantiated as that particular type. However, this works differently with these enums, even though draft as a string accurately represents draft as one of the members of post state, we can't actually use the raw string, if you will, as our value to a variable that has the type post state. And we could say, you know, just don't do that. Always use the post state dot draft, post state dot scheduled, post state dot published, because then you know you'll be safe. But this gets tricky if you want to take input from a user, right? And you need to cast that to a particular enum member. Or maybe you're writing a TypeScript library and you have functions that require enum value as an argument, your user will have to both use your library and also they'll have to import your enum as well. They can't just use their own matching strings and have type safety in that way. So using strings as your enum value is a little bit better than numbers, but it still acts weird if you're familiar with a lot of the rest of the way TypeScript type mechanics work. So for these reasons, I generally try to avoid enums when writing TypeScript. Now you can use type unions instead. And we had a video about this a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a link to that up in the corner here, but let me show you kind of how I do that. So instead let's create this post state constant. It's going to be a variable, a value that of course will look almost the same in JavaScript. A couple of things to notice here. I've kind of named this the same way I named the enum. So we've got post state draft scheduled and published with the same string values. I'd put as const at the end here, and this changes the type of this object. So as you can see, if I hover over post state here, the type is essentially exactly the same as the value. If we remove as const here, you'll see that it doesn't quite look the same. Instead, we have these keys and the values of those keys are just some string. So it's not quite as narrow as we want. When we put as const here, TypeScript knows that these values can't actually change. And so it will type them as strictly as possible. So we have draft scheduled and published as the actual values of these keys in the type itself. And that's key here. So now this is the value that we can use and we can use this in the same way we were using before. So I can say post state dot draft and that works. And now X here of course is draft. Now, what I can't do though, is use post state as the type. 
if I try and put post state as the type here, it will complain that I'm using a value as a type. And maybe I meant to say type of post state. Well, kind of. Let's copy that and we're going to use that to create a new type here. So let's create a type called post state type. Unfortunately, we can't use the same name post state because you know, that's going to clobber the variable itself and be hard to reference. But what we can do is just suffix it with type or maybe use some other convention that you have in your code base. Now, let's see if we just say type post state, that's not going to work, right? Because the type of post state is the whole object. And if we look at this, X is supposed to be the whole object, but instead it's a type string. X needs to be one of the values of the keys of post state. Now we can say key of type of post state, and this gets us a little bit closer. If we hover over our type now, we can see that it is draft scheduled and published. However, they're all in lowercase, which means they actually are the keys of our post state quote unquote enum. They're not the values and we want the values. That's pretty easy to do though. We can wrap this in type of post state and then we'll use square brackets to index into that. And this is our final type. So we say, get me the type of post state and we're gonna index into that type using the key of the type of post state. And so now if we hover over post state type, we can see that it is a union of draft, scheduled and published. The actual values that were in our enum members before are now a union type that we can use to assign to that type. And so now X can be of post state type because it is draft. And now what this also means though, we can use a raw string for this. So we could say scheduled and notice we even get some autocomplete on that because post state type is just these three values. We don't actually need to use post state dot scheduled. Instead, we can just use the raw string. This is the type of thing I would do instead of using an enum. Often you could just write the union type directly. So just pretty much write what I'm seeing in this hover over here, something like that. Uh, but if you want to do something a little more dynamic, if you want to be able to have an object where you can reference the values of your enum like this, then this is a great way to do it. Now, I'm not saying never use enums. There are legit cases for using a TypeScript enum. My preference is to avoid them as much as possible because they act very differently than the rest of the types in my system. But that doesn't mean you should avoid them. As long as you understand some of the gotchas, you'll be able to figure out what are the right use cases for enums in your application. So that's the scoop on TypeScript enums. Like I said, I have some more details about enums in a blog post. So definitely check out that link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. The actual values